because sometimes that C is going to stand for conflict because there will be some conflict. Amen. You know, it doesn't have to be combat, but there will be conflict. And how you deal with that conflict, you know, that you and your spouse need to make sure you guys are on the same page, even if you don't Five, agree. Four, three, two, one, zero. All engines. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Welcome to episode 101 of Married Into Crazy with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And like we said, this is episode 101. We didn't actually say it. You did, but it's okay. See, she's always pointing out the little stuff that doesn't matter. <laughs> when I speak, I speak for both of us. Ooh, okay. It's like old school E.F. Hutton. When I speak, everyone listens. Remember and those I'm speaking commercials? For the, I do, but nobody else does. Oh. Hey, if you remember the E.F. Hutton commercials, that means you are old. <laughs> like my Like my wife, because she is older than me. Um, I like I to point that out. Always. All of how many months? Two months? Two months. Two months. Got me a cougar. Cougar. Wow. Two Arr. months and seven days. There you go. So we want to welcome everybody back to the podcast. So a lot has transpired. We've mm-hmm. hit the milestone of a <laughs> of 100 podcasts. Yes, we did. So that, that was a blessing. And last week, if you heard it, we had our entire family on. We had the entire case and clan all three of our children. And uh, we're going to get into that in just a second because we're going to jump into uh, a question that came to us via our text community. And for those of you that aren't, uh, that are new to the podcast, uh, for the last two and a half weeks or so, we've actually been experimenting and we have a text community where you can text questions, responses to Instagram, Facebook, the whole nine yards directly to us at our text number, which is uh, area code 918 two seven nine nine that's nine one eight three five one two seven nine nine and the last four spell crazy c-r-z-y so that should be nine one eight three five one crazy c-r-z-y good job i know good job that was nice good job good job rana see And the reason why we share that with you is because we are going to get to a point where a question did come in via our text line and we responded directly back to the individual. But we also thought that it would be a great topic, particularly because some things that have recently transpired. But before we go there, before we go there, yeah, I just want to acknowledge um, a a particular um, Um, channel. um, Seriously, (laughs) a particular channel on YouTube. And it's called Dropping Jewels. It's a Snapper Red TV. And this particular episode, the last episode that she had so on honey, there. What, what is it called? Is it? Dropping what? Jewels. Is J-E-W-E-L-S. That? That's the channel name. Oh, okay. But gotcha. it's Snapper Red TV. And uh, she, the, this episode is about back to school and how to get ready for online learning. Mm. So uh, a lot of the kids are going back to school. So... You know, a lot like our kids are going back to school and unfortunately there will be they're going back online. They're not going to be going on campus and some are struggling. Some have been struggling and this is a good opportunity for them to take a look at the channel and see how to get ready to go back to school. She talks about Zoom, some of the things that, you know, raising your hand and that kind of thing. So I just thought that would be good information for people that have or parents that have kids going back to school. And even those people, students that are maybe going back to school that may be new to Zoom, um, dropping jewels on YouTube, Snapper Red TV. And this last it, this latest epi- episode blah, 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 is back to school, how to get ready for online learning. Oh, that's perfect. So I, yeah. I have a lot of friends right now um, that I work with whose children are dealing with this. I mean, our kids are about they're in high school, but at least the one that's remaining. But you have younger kids that are having difficulties, even mm-hmm. the parents that are struggling with Zoom. <laughs> yeah. I saw a meme the other day that said, at this juncture in life, if I have to tell one more person to put their Zoom on mute, <laughs> <laughs> I 
It's funny. Some of the strangest things that you will hear. Yeah. It's funny also because we just earlier today, we had our uh, church conference on Zoom and that some of the people were talking about, you know, you can do the reactions. There's the clapping your hands and the thumbs up. Oh, and so right. my mom was like, how do you I don't know. I don't see that. How you do that? And I was like, oh, Lord, Linda. <laughs> so then another uh, one of the members, he was like, where's that at? And, you know, they found it. And she's like, oh, I learned something new today. So it's really cute. Well, we need to embrace it. That's part of our community. I mean, that, that yeah. community, our world, that's what we're living in now. It's mm -hmm. becoming a virtual world yep. to a certain extent because of everything that's transpiring with the pandemic. Regardless of how you feel, politically or otherwise, uh, it is here to stay. I was about to say, Zoom is here to stay. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you know what else isn't going anywhere? Us. Our YouTube channel. And meaning that it's not, it's still there. Oh, I was like, <laughs> not that it's not uh, going anywhere. Okay. So I'm going to ask a favor. Feel <laughs> free. So this is going to be on YouTube as well. Go to our YouTube channel. Every single channel that we have is Married Into Crazy. Mm -hmm. So go at Married Into Crazy, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and give a subscribe. Go ahead and give a like. And when it comes to the podcast itself, we've got a pretty vast catalog now of a, a whopping 101 episodes. Ooh. So feel free to go to Apple Podcasts and... Give us a review as well as um, give us those five stars. Five. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, we are very thankful to now be a part of the Pandora podcast family. Ooh, ooh. So that is a new development. So now uh, Snooks, Lovey, the whole clan, everybody is on Pandora as well as Ghana, G-A-A-N-A. -A -A. We've also been added to what happens to be India's largest online distribution of streaming material or i should say streaming music podcast the whole nine yards they have like 150 million plus subscribers and so we're very honored to um, be welcomed into that uh, fold as well as a result of our relationship with libsyn yeah so without further ado i would like to jump into the topic so in our most recent um podcast we had all three of our kids and it was a good time. And what we want to do is be very transparent because the dynamic changes at times where not everybody's going to get along. Those things happen in families. Um, we're no different than anybody else. And it was a timely question that came in via our text line because the person asked, basically, I don't I have my phone right here with me, but the person asked if, you know, how do you two keep a united front when your the way uh, something along the lines of the, the way that you're you're parenting you want to parent your kids differently and then you, you have a tendency to argue about it but how do you keep that united front when dealing with your kids or how do you not let them tear you apart and it's funny that that came in several days after uh, we had a bit of a blowout with our eldest son that you heard last week <laughs> so without going into great detail um, it was one of those things where we had a massive disagreement and some tempers flared and we basically had to um, part ways for now and you know he, he's got some things that he needs to take care of um, and we as parents also have things that we need to continue to do here in our household as well and but in, in the aftermath of that snooks and i you know there was some tension that was left in the house mm -hmm. why, why are you smiling because you said we had to part ways like aka we kicked him out <laughs> Well, not really. We didn't really kick him out either. Um, it was more of the, um, it, I won't say it was ultimatum. It's basically you do what we respect the household, follow the rules. And if you find that you cannot do that, then this is probably not the place that you need to be. And his, his response was, well, then I'll leave. And I kind of repeated myself again. Okay, so you're saying... And he's like, I'll leave. Okay. And that's, that's fine. You know, there was some, some disrespectful words that were said that I didn't appreciate. And so at that point, Levy was like, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's best that you go, you know, in, in a nutshell. So like Levy also said, it w there was tension afterwards because when he, after he left, like tempers were just, I want to say there wasn't shouting and, and that kind of thing, but the... <laughs> Not after, but during, absolutely. Well, um, I meant like between us. Right. So you could, you could feel the tension. It was it was pretty thick, and 
I so I and I just flat out asked him. I said, "So do you? Are you you mad at me or do you blame me for this?" And he was like, "No, I don't blame you." He's like, "I think there was fault on everyone that was involved or whatever. There was fault." And <laughs> of course, I was like, uh, "I wasn't at fault. I'm the mama." Blah blah blah. Whatever. <laughs> That's like that old dinosaur saying, "Not." Not the mama. Not the mama. And you were like, no, uh-uh, this is, this is my house. This is my house. And I, and, I, and I reiterated that fact more than one time. This is my house, you know. So um, it's, it's funny, too, because one thing that um, I, I, I want to kind of go back to the beginning okay. of um, our relationship when we first got married. So one thing that Lovey and I – we 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 get into it pretty much about how we were raising the kids not so much how we were raising him but like discipline when discipline came our core values pretty much were the same we know what we expect out of our children we want them to be a certain way and we expect certain things but how we dealt with uh when when the ball dropped that that was that was a that was a thing and if I was, um, what's the word? If I was overreacting, or if he was on 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 one <laughs> on some sub issues, if I was overreacting, and you know, and then there were times when if is it him overreacting? So, you know, we had to find our groove on how we were going to parent. And I think I I always kind of felt that, to, you know, being honest, being totally transparent it was hard for me because I, I felt that I was an outsider so to speak um, I was not the biological mom and in in Lovey's uh, how do I say it I don't want to say you were correcting me but in your was it displeasure we didn't see eye to eye in in his in our not seeing eye to eye on how to raise him for me it felt like he was like he never said the words well you're not his mother but I always felt that like that was the underlying you know the un the undertone of the the uh your displeasure in some way shape or form and of course you know that also lends to um you know with with the in-laws with your mom or whatever so it was always I always felt like I was OK, maybe I shouldn't say anything. And I go back and forth. Well, I, I just won't say nothing then. And he well, that's not what I'm saying. Well, that's how I feel, you know. So it was a uh, it was it was a it was a bit of a struggle, you know. And it's a difficult thing when you have two people coming together. And particularly if there is a child from a prior relationship, um, it's hard because you, you've got to reach some type of consensus on how you're going to continue to raise that child or co-parent. Mm -hmm. For us, it wasn't even a matter of co-parenting because the, the bio, his, his biological, um, I hate saying mother, but the person that gave birth to him, to say. She, um, she was out of the picture. She wasn't around, mm -hmm. and um, which was, by the way, by her choice. It wasn't like I was blocking her out or anything. But because of that, you, you do have to find an accord. And there's it not imagine not only coming together as two individuals, trying to learn how to be a couple, um, you know, both stepping in from, you know, independent, so to speak, on our own, then you also have to kind of get that dynamic of, of raising a child as well. And, and it's a young child. Mm -hmm. So he was about a year old when we met. Yeah. And it's one of those things where there was a lot of growth taking place in, in every single one of us. He's like, who's this chick? And, you know, you ain't my grandma. You're not the mama. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, and there you were like, okay, so how do I relate to this little guy? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there I am like, well, how do I manage this whole scenario? Mm -hmm. All that comes. But at some point you get to, through a lot of trial and error, you, you figure out how to get your household to run properly. Or at least the best that you possibly can. I won't say properly because it's, th there's no manual. There's no direction. There's no, you know, at the time... Um, CD-ROM or anything you could put in the computer that's going to tell you. And I don't even think YouTube wasn't around. We didn't have those things that we can go and like, okay, so how do I do this? You can go out and buy all the books you want, and I kid you not, it just doesn't apply. It's trial and error. Yeah, it is trial and error. And, it, you know, it's so funny, too. I just want to kind of quickly give numbers. 
we always we we love to focus a lot on finances we say you know money is like the number one or the number two cheating is number one or what have you for, for cause of divorce okay but uh you know fighting about kids is not nothing is is oh, it, no it isn't anything new so there was a study done by lauren papp she's the associate dean of research at the university of madison Madison, Wisconsin School of Human Ecology. So they, there was a uh, study, 100 wives and 100 husbands were to keep track of their fights that they had for in a diary for 15 days. And they did a tally on what the fights, you know, what was the highest number that of the fights with the reasons behind it. And uh, <clears throat> basically, it was about the kids. Um, really? Yeah. So... Or thirty six point four percent of arguments husbands had, and thirty eight point nine percent of arguments wives had, were related to how their kids behave, diff- the differences in parenting styles, and how to discipline them, and just other general topics of related to raising kids. So the majority of the fights, I won't say well, according to the study, just per the one hundred. The majority of the fights were about the kids, you know. So you're fighting about the kids, and then you throw all this other stuff on top of it, and the money, and then the right. disconnect, and and so on and so forth. Um, hello. Well, think, <laughs> what think do you about expect? that. Okay. Well, well think the topics that you just threw out. Mm-hmm. So remember those numbers: thirty-six point four and thirty-eight point nine percent. So basically. You know, like 36% and 39%. And that's greater than a third, right? So that's about, let's just call it a third. Let's call it 33%, just average it out or whatever. It's a little, let's say it's 36%, whatever. But it's a third. But you have finances, you have jobs, you've got sex, you've got in-laws, you've got, um, what else? Um, all, all these stressors, these outside a influences. Lot of stressors, yeah. Um, you got so many different things that are pulling you in different directions. Um, careers. Do I go to school? I mean, it, it, intimacy. It, it, there's and not so many just things. Sex. Yeah. Right. And now kids, but dealing with your children is more than a third. One third of the challenges that you're going to face as a couple, if you if you are a couple that has children, um, it's going to be related to them in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. And just think about too, if you if you think about okay, let's even talk about just kids in general outside of the relationship after the divorce happens or whatever, what are they fighting about? The kids, <laughs> you know, it's like the the fight continues. I may not fight with you about money anymore because we're not together. I may not fight with you about intimacy because we're not together, but I'm gonna fight with you about the kids because we had those together. Our, our children are an extension of ourselves, you know, and they're always going to be in the equation some way, shape, or form, whether we're together or whether we're not together, you know. Well, true that. So, you know, it's funny you say that, though, because even after they leave, I mean, th- then what happens? Once the kids leave the house, you're, then, you're, then you're an empty nester. And then, you know, so you were fighting about kids all that time. It, even if it wasn't truly positive or truly healthy, then all of a sudden, but there was some passion involved in those arguments. And then it's gone all of a sudden. Well, even it's funny you say that, too, because I didn't bring this part up. But it says even for empty nesters, conversations about adult children remain an important factor for relationship happiness in the long term. Mm. So our 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 oldest is an adult. Or, you know, everyone knows that. And it's still a factor. You oh, know, it is. Even I, though he's well. He, he's not here anymore but one one thing that i will say as far as with lovey um it has been one of the one of the major things that we fought about was <laughs> the kids you know true we've we've had extreme extreme dis- disagreements yes extreme disagreements on how to manage the kids either you're either one of us is being too soft or being too hard being too lenient or too giving, or uh, you know, it's just, it, it runs the gamut. And it's that pendulum swings both ways. And it's hard to find something in the middle that we would agree on. And more times than not, we would come to a conclusion or you decide that, at least in my case, it's like, you know, it's not worth fighting over, whatever. 
whatever. You know, you make the choice, you make the decision, or whatever. Yeah, and I don't like that because that's passive aggressive to me. But you done, I, you've done it. I, I know. I, I've done it. And, and I didn't. It didn't sit well with me when I did it. I did it to keep the peace. But I also didn't like it when you did it because I'm like, oh, now you're just saying anything you just to. to me. <laughs> no, I hear you. And this, okay. So listen, all of you that are out there that are dealing with this, whether they're adult kids, um, high schoolers, if they're like like the kids, like oh, for instance, you, you mentioned Snapperette, right, and mm -hmm. dropping jewels. Some of those kids are going to be going back to school. Uh, Dealing with Zoom, dealing with online learning, distance learning, whatever you want to call it, that's a major stressor. And you've got parents that are going to be arguing over it. Because if you've got two parents, I've seen this. I've been on the phone where I've heard parents arguing uh, or having disagreements because they both are scheduled for a Zoom meeting for work. And yet the kids have to do a Zoom as well. And there's not enough bandwidth in the house to to, to couple, you know, to, to allow everybody to do what they need to do. And someone's like, well... Whose job is more important? Well, you can't be on your Zoom. Well, you can't be on your Zoom. And then the kids are like, well, who's going to be with me on my Zoom? And then when you get on it, when it's all said and done, the teacher is sitting there reading to them in the first place. It's like, well, you could have did this by phone. I was about to say, you could have, or, or not done it at all. Or, or at all. Just That could have just been a simple assignment that somebody did. Exactly. So there's all these different stressors. But when it's all said and done, it's it's involving the kids. And we've got to find a way for everyone to find a happy medium. So So let's catch up on the things that, that we dealt with specifically. Okay, catch up. Uh, well, before I go there though, I wanna remind everybody that this is August. And so every single month, the last Saturday of the month, we have the Married oh. Into Crazy Communication Workshop. <laughs> I was like, what's going on in August? <laughs> <laughs> but we have the Married Into Crazy Communication Workshop. It's gone international, y'all. It's been a lot of fun thus far. And what we do is we sit down and we go through some training where it's going to help everybody communicate that much better. We should have listened to our own advice when communicating with our oldest child this past weekend. Um, but mm. eh, nah, I don't think that would have helped regardless. Oh, yeah. nah, no. I think we tried and it didn't work. <laughs> but anyway. No, I, I mean, you, you, you did. I, I will say this. Levy, Levy was better than I was. I was working that disc. Levy was working that disc. But she was throwing it like a Frisbee. He so. was trying to did work the disc on me. I was like, uh-uh, homie. <laughs> but see, what we do is we, we teach in this workshop, what we do is we kind of give everyone some tools, some resources mm -hmm. that we didn't have when we first started out. And so it's for a nominal fee. So it's it's gotten to the point where for $47, what you'll be able to do is go to our website, marriedintocrazy.com, and you'll be able to go. And if you want to see, is this worth me actually doing this? First off, the people that have gone through it will tell you first off, and we've got um, some testimonies that are on the website definitely do this. It's worth that and then some. But there's a free one to start off with. Click on that front page. You'll go to our, our free webinar. It'll give you a resource tool that's there that's going to be our relationship self-audit tool. When you go through that, you're going to make a decision at that point as to whether or not, you know what, I want to sit there and go through the, the Married in a Crazy Communication Workshop. It's $47, and what you'll actually receive are two discs, two disc assessments, and then on top of that, you'll each get a personalized, even if it's just one of you, Whoever takes it is going to get a personalized 22-page ebook that's going to give you some some background, some breakdown of your person, why you like this, your preferences and tendencies. But even more than that, we're going to go into the five different uh, pillars, if you will, of being crazy. Snooks is going to go deep on some of the scripture that supports being compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, and yielding. And on top of that, you're going to get some disc training as well. And I, you know what? Check it out. Go to our website, marriedintocrazy.com. You will not regret it. Everyone that has gone through it has given nothing but rave reviews. And I know that I'm, of course, I'm going to say that because I'm the host and, and one of the facilitators. But realistically, we've got people from all over the world now that we can say have participated. And um, it's been, we're very pleased with the feedback and to know that we're actually able to pour into other individuals. And we'd love the opportunity to pour into you as well. So I said that. Now we're back to back to our regular programming. <laughs> like, is that a commercial? Oh, <laughs> no, but it's so like with our our, our son, it, it got to the point where it reached ahead, and you have to make a decision when you're arguing about your children or any other particular thing. You have to make a decision. You have to draw a line in the sand and say, okay, at what point do we stop this this friction, this tension, 
and say, you know what, it's time to move on. I've got to come up with a different solution because this isn't working. Creating this negativity in our house, there's no positive dividend that's going to come out of this. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, when do we stop? So I had to make a hard stop and say, okay, well, basically we're going to agree to disagree and you can't stay here any longer. Now, does that mean that we don't love him? Absolutely not. We love him beyond recognition. But I remember having some intense uh, fellowships, let's call them that, intense fellowships with my mother. Um, and, and you know what? To be 100% and completely transparent, I was kicked out when I was 17. Well, I wasn't kicked out. It, it was, was a mutual out. agreement. He was kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mutual agreement. Um, but it was one of those things where the tension was so high that it was my mother recognized that it was the best thing um, for both of us to be able to progress. And it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, my senior year, my entire senior year in high school, I lived away from home, meaning a friend of mine and I, we actually lived in our, we paid the rent, we did everything, we worked our butts off, we played sports, we went to school, and I know anybody from my high school administration is like, what? That wasn't his father I spoke to when I called there? No. <laughs> but we had to actually grow, and I think that sometimes when you're pushed out of the nest, you're forced to fly, and it was that time, it's that time for our son um, to where we were do, we were basically enabling. Well, I was about to say, it, I feel like it, there comes a point where, like you kind of said, enough is enough. We can only do so much to help. And after we've done all that we can do, you know, once you get a certain age, I understand about the whole COVID and, and what have you, but at some point, you're going to have to figure it out, you know. You have to, you're going to have to get your own scrapes and your own bruises and hit your head and, and make your mistakes and, and, and all those things. The way I feel is like, we've given you the tools. You come from good stock. You, you got the right stuff. You have the good stuff in you. So now go use it, go figure it out. Um, that might sound harsh to some people. Oh my God, why would you do that? But when you have two adults well, I'll say two adults. When you have the the adults in the house, because the parents, I should say, yeah, that's and then an you adult. have yeah, but then you have your child who comes back to your home as an adult. Ugh, the rules from when you were before still apply because we're still the parents. This is still our home. Now, mind you, I'm not saying you got to go to bed at nine o'clock or any of that kind of thing, but there are just certain things that. Um, I won't compromise on just because of the structure, the house, this is how it is. And there's two other ones that are going to come behind you. And if you, you know, I personally, if you allow, I feel like if, if we were to allow him to act like this was his home where he paid rent and he, you know, yeah, it's your home because you, it's a family home, but it's not your home to where you could just do whatever you want to do. And mind you, we're not just saying this for him. This, these are oh, rules. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. These so are rules that apply to everybody. Exactly, in the house that's what I'm saying. There's people earlier that, in the day we had to, we had to set the middle child, the 20 year old. Well, that's what I mean. There's there are people who are come are coming behind, and those that come behind, they always look. They're always looking. Okay, well, remember how blah, far can blah. I push it? Exactly, and it's like nope. You, there's, there's no there's standards. You know, you know and nothing. We have a certain standards and procedures and processes that. Uh, and, and, he, and I think every parent does to a certain extent in their homes. And there's a there's a regimen that needs to be followed to a certain extent. Not like, you know, at this time you do this and at that time you do that. No, it's just that. But there are certain rules and regulations that exist in every home. And when a person reaches a point where they feel like they don't apply to them, then it's time for you to find another place. Because if you can't follow the rules and regulations, then it's definitely not a, a, a place for you. It's not a good spot. It's not a good fit. There's a certain structure right. that needs to be followed. And, and, and so we've reached that. But that's okay because there was a structure in my mother's house that I no longer wanted to follow. I think each and every one of us, for the most part. Well, I didn't have that problem. There was some of us that <laughs> there was some structure that we felt like we wanted to implement our own structure in our lives. Now, we wish him well. We love him. I want nothing but the best for our son. Of course. I want nothing for the best for our, all of our kids. But this is that time. This is that critical period in life now where it's like, okay, it's time for you to stretch. It's time for you to, like we talked about before, the butterfly squeezing through the cocoon. 
when it's coming, it's time for you to now squeeze and struggle to actually get those juices from your body to go into your wings so that you can fly. Because living here underneath our roof, doing the things, and we didn't give you the opportunity to struggle, we became, to a certain extent, enablers to where we weren't giving you that positive tension, that positive thing. Because when you're too close to something or someone, familiarity breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. And we all have that, that we, you take certain things for granted. And we definitely feel as if we were taken for granted. Mm -hmm. Heck, our, our, our youngest, our 17 year old takes us for granted. I've oh got God, like I can't wait till four she kids. <laughs> I've got a bunch of other girls upstairs right now. And they're, they're like, oh, my friends are coming over. And they're stomping through the house knowing that we're in the studio taping. No, I sent her a text message. Okay. And I was like, uh, we're taping, be quiet. Like, shut so, it down, girl. But was, that's what, anyway, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that, that that's something that we all need to be cognizant of. Look, husbands, wives. Um, single parents, those individuals that are still raising kids or dealing with your adult children, it's not easy. There's going to be some phenomenal, some great times. You heard the podcast. We had a phenomenal time, you know, less than a week prior. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. But what has to remain that common thread, that denominator for it all is love. Everything needs to be done in love. And also, it, it does need to be done in love, but... You guys have to get to a point where you're you can create that united front, because I mean it says in the Bible, you know. Um, it says you know. It says you know, no. Where it says in the Bible about let no man what God has put together let no man put asunder. No man. That includes your kids. Amen. And I think sometimes we might miss that um, as believers as Christians, and I say that for my believers and for my Christians, but. I think we miss that because we don't look at our children as just any man or whatever. But that's what the word says. Let no man put, hey, don't let your kids drive a wedge between you because we've heard you. And, and I'm sure there are people that know someone. You may even be that one where you have a child who manipulates, you know, I'm going to go say this to mom or I'll go say this to dad well, dad said, or what mom said, well, I didn't say that, or blah, blah, blah. And then the next thing you know, the parents are arguing and fighting and the kids are standing back like, okay, so how does that, how is that going to help um, uh, the situation? Or they're, they're reaping the benefits from now they're going to be able to get their way because right. I'm mad. I don't care. Just go do it, you know, or I'm, well, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So It's so we, true. How many times have you watched a movie where, and there's so many, and the reason why you've seen it in multiple movies is because it plays out so often where there's a, a mother with a child um, and they've got a, a son or a daughter and they have, and, and the parent has a significant other, a significant other, somebody that they really care about that they want to, but the kid doesn't want, you know, the, the parent to be with that individual, not because of anything negative, but just because they feel like they're intruding on their place. Right. And it, it, there comes a point where you have to make a choice. You know, because you have one life to live. Now, I'm not saying don't live it for your child and be invested in your child, but I am saying that you have to at least model as best you can, you know, a good, healthy relationship. Because there's going to come a point where my son is going to be in a relationship where his children are going to be looking at him and he's going to need to model what it means to be a good man, what it means to be a good father, what it means to be a good husband or significant other. Same thing with our daughters. You know, and so we want to make sure that we've got that united front. So you always have to come back together. If you are married, this is married into crazy. There will be crazy moments, and it goes beyond what we say the acronym stands for. Beyond the compassion. <laughs> when it goes beyond yeah, the compassion or the yielding. Because sometimes that C is going to stand for conflict because there will be some conflict. Amen. You know, it doesn't have to be combat, but there will be conflict. And how you deal with that conflict, you know, that you and your spouse need to make sure you guys are on the same page. Even if you don't agree, I mean, I, I'm, I don't mean to kind of take over no, here, go, but go. I remember there were times where Lovey and I, we did not see eye to eye about the situation. But one thing that after we learned, you know, after year four, I think we kind of got on the right track. Well, maybe about year 10 where the kids <laughs> were concerned. But as far as, you know, one thing that we did not do is we did not fight in front of our kids. We never let them think that, oh, you one up me, I one up you, or, you know, I can play this on dad and I can, 
you know, or play this off a of mom. Now there are certain questions, you know, they, they're, they're smart. They're not, well, if I ask dad, dad will probably say, yeah, before mom will. So they'll ask dad and then they'll come ask me. And then they say, well, dad said it's okay. You know, it's just certain things though. But one thing Lovey and I will, if we'll feel some kind of way, whatever, in front of the kids, we're like, we're locked and loaded. We're together. But then when we go upstairs and we shut the door or later on when they're asleep, I'm like, why did you say that? Or he's like, I didn't want to do blah, 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 whatever. Then we have our grown up discussion about, you know, but to the kids, no, you, you can't break us down. We're like a wall. Yeah, that good, better, and yeah, different. It's exactly. one of those things where we have to be united. And, and there, I can't tell you how many times where I had to agree to something that I didn't want to agree with, but I was not going to sit there and right. usurp my wife's authority in mm -hmm. front of our children. And even when they're... You can always change your mind. Well, you can always go back and say, you know what, we've given it some more thought, mm -hmm. X, Y, Z. And, and, we, and, and we've, we've done that. We've done that so many times. We've done that so many times. We have... Um, I, I remember there have been times where I I might be trying to go off or not trying to go off. I was going off. And, you know, Lovey may have felt that I was doing too much. And instead of him saying, Rana, you're doing too much or blah, 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 he'll just give me a touch on my back or or we'll do, you know. And I knew what that touch meant. That means, okay, cut it off. And the same thing, vice versa. When he's doing the same thing, I'll just, you know, I'll look at him or, I'll posture some kind of way. And it's like we were in sync. Well, as far as uh, in tune with each other, he knew, okay, she's, she's thinking I'm, I'm going too far. So let me cut it off and let me whatever. And you probably think, well, how do you get there? How do you get to the point where you, you, you get in sync? Well, it goes back to one of our earlier podcasts and we were talking about rules of engagement for mm -hmm. when you as a couple argue, there needs to be rules of engagement for how you two are going to, engage your children as well mm, you right. have to come up with some rules and you know almost like safe words right <laughs> not just when you're putting on that leather and lace you know getting it going um and you got that safe word wow okay you're like bell pepper <laughs> 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 no but so silly <laughs> no but it's one of those things where you, you you do have to create these rules of engagement to where it's like look if we get to a certain point whatever we just have to agree that at some point, we have to cut it off. And it could be that tap, that touch, mm -hmm. that look, that, you know, raise of the eyebrows. And it's like, okay, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you have to be on the same accord and you have to be in agreement that what, regardless of how you're feeling, you got to stop being a slave to your feelings. Feelings will betray you time and time again. Because in the moment when you're in the heat of battle and you're angry, you're never going to feel like compromising. You're never going to feel like I need to stop right now. You're never going to feel like, you know, what you will feel like is like this kid's not going to get the best of me right now because I'm the mama or I'm the daddy. Mm -hmm. But you have to put that feeling aside and be like, okay, we have a covenant. We have, you know, an agreement. Okay, I'll come back to this later. All right. And so sometimes it might be just mid-sentence where I just shut up and I'm mad and everybody knows I'm mad, but we will go upstairs. And Snux is like, okay, let's talk about this. And then she'll present something and no matter how much I want to say, I don't agree with you. Right is right, and you recognize right. You just have to have the humility to be able to say, okay, well, I agree with you, but I ain't saying nothing right now. I'm going to let him stew in it until tomorrow because <laughs> I've done that. We've even had where Lovey or, or, or myself have like maybe we, we've gone too far with the kids or we were mad. We blew it out of proportion or what have you. And so the other one, you know, and it's just blah, 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 whatever. And so later on we'll talk about it. And then we'll go back, you know, and present to the kids, like you were saying, like, okay, well, we had a change of mind. Or, you know, I'll tell him, well, you go tell them, you know, you thought about it, blah, blah, blah. Because if I don't agree, I'll give a good argument for them. They don't know that I'm doing this, though. I'll give a good argument for them. He's like, okay, yeah, you're right. Or he'll do one for me. Or he'll give me a good argument for what they were saying. And then so... The next day I'd be like, well, okay, yeah, I thought about what you said and I understand what you were, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really think about what they were saying. I thought about what Lovey said. And so, you know, it gives us like a little bit of points with the kids. Right, some kind that's of, true. Not that I and care be, about points, but, you know, now I have something to hold over their heads. <laughs> but we should also have the, the ability to apologize. 
Absolutely. Because we're all humans. They're just little humans. Absolutely. Or younger humans. Come on, they ain't little. So there's times where I, I there's a multitude mm-hmm. of times where I've had to go apologize to my kids, um, to my son, to my daughters, uh, multiple times, to my nephews, <laughs> to my lying. nieces. No. Um, because there's times where I'll just like, I, I'll reach like, you know, you see that, that, that teapot where the water is just getting hot, getting hot, getting hot, getting hot. But when it starts to boil, it's whistling just like the cartoons. I've been that individual. You've been Florida. Florida? Florida Evans, when she dropped the punch bowl. Oh. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. Um, that's not cursing, by the way. That's in the Bible. <laughs> um, so, so silly. <laughs> no, but, but you have to be able to go back. And, and again, it's, it's a level of humility. And, and just, again, it's always coming from a place of love. And you've got to be willing to step back and recognize that um, you're not always right. Exactly. I mean, you... You have to allow, like, like you're saying, you have to apologize because by you apologizing, you're teaching them that it's okay to be wrong right. and that they, you know, the door is still open for the apology. We're not always right about everything. And we do apologize because we are human. And if I acted like I was right about everything all the time, that would, what kind of relationship would I have with my kids or anybody else, you know? Right, right, right. And, and, and don't be ashamed of being wrong because we are human. It's part of it. You know, look, nobody parents and knocks it out, you know, hits a home run every single day as a parent. Mm-hmm. That just doesn't happen. You're lucky if you get a, get to, if you get a, a bunt. Man, sometimes. You're lucky if you get on base. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't even get up to hit, so. <laughs> right. Let's just hope you're in the first rotation that you even get a chance to get on the field. I promise you. They'd be like, mm-mm, pass her up because no. It, it happens, you know, and you, we strike out more times than not as a parent. Than we do, but as a couple, you're going to strike out as well. But the thing is, you have to come together mm-hmm. and just at the very minimum be open to the idea of you two working together, having that united front no matter what. And then you can always come back and fix it or apologize or explain, but you have to have that united front. So I hope we've answered the question. Like, I'm not going to say any names, I don't want to you know put anybody out there because I don't know exactly what's going on in your house. Um, but I do love the fact that you asked the question. So feel free to always reach out to us via our text line, 918-351-2799. So definitely reach out to us. But at this point, what we want to do is give one more reminder. What? We want to give one more reminder uh, regarding the Married in a Crazy workshop that's going to be taking place into this month. And we also want you to go to our website, check out the free webinar that's on there. Um, that we made just for you. It's a great video, um, as well as a self audit tool that's available to you. August 29th is the yes. August 29th is the the day of the live online web or, or workshop, workshop, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. So sign up, guys. It's a lot of fun. We have a good time. We we're very interactive, and you know, it, it's it's just fun. It's so, a good time. Yeah. So uh, right now, what we're gonna do is two for the road. Because I'm actually going back to work. I'm quasi-essential to a certain extent. I'm so, still essential. So we're going to read um, from the Couples I Can Can. So as you know, there's 40 different affirmations in these cans, um, which are available on the website as well. Um, so, But we read these to set, have something to focus on for the week. We didn't read one last week because we had the kids. So, oh, man. Okay, mine says, I can be more patient with my partner. Mine says I can pick up after myself because there is a a pile of clean clothes at the foot of our bed. So um, with his name on it, with my name on it, literally, my name's written inside my drawer. No, just kidding. No, but it's one of those things where um, I do need to pick up after myself and get better at that. Mm-hmm. So next week we may be talking about a little bit more. We'll tell you how our fitness here. journey is going. Oh yeah, uh, we haven't gone into it, but we started seventy five yeah. hard this week, and we'll explain what that is. Woo. And what it's doing to us. And again, we're, we're going to try and stay on a united front <laughs> and stay together on this particular yes. fitness journey. So uh, until the next time, be blessed. Bye-bye.